Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's June 22nd, 2019, and you are watching the Theo Trade Weekend Update. So this weekend I've elected not to put a video portion in because I wanted to spend the vast amount of the time right here displaying a couple of charts, a couple of trade ideas. With that, let's get to it. You know, I'm going to start this uh, weekend's update here with uh, the TNX, which is the 10-year Treasury Index, kind of an unlikely area. Nevertheless, this uh, this past week was, well, all, again, all about interest rates, all about the bonds, and all about the Fed. And, you know, with that in mind, as I pull up the TNX here, I got to tell you, you know, a lot of hype comes into the Fed, like a lot of these weeks are disappointing when you're like, oh, here's the Fed and there's all this anti you know, anticipation around it. This past week of trade though, I gotta tell you, this week did not disappoint. We saw double down dovish comments from the Fed. You had Mario Draghi and the ECP, uh, ECB also, of course, go double down, you know, uh, dovish in here. It's, uh, it has been the week of central banks you know, after this week, you may or may not be aware of this, there is now $13 trillion around the world of negatively yielding debt. And something I'll probably mention, you know, as this kind of week goes on, Germany right now, almost about $850 billion of their debt, which is the vast amount of it, is all now in negative yielding territory. Think about that, if you will, because it's where I kind of wanted to start off this uh, this weekend's video. There's a whole lot to think about with interest rates that are just absolutely collapsing. With that, we come to the TNX. The TNX, uh, this is the last nine months. TNX this week, uh, again, did not, uh, did not disappoint. The effective rate at one point. Now, if you've never seen this before, you never really read the TNX, all right? I know it says, you know, 20.68, but effectively what this means is this is the treasury index. It's what is being yielded by, of course, the 10-year. And to read this, it's really 2.068%. Okay, and you can see we actually cracked under the 2% marker for, uh, for a period of time during this week. Now, why do I bring up and why do I, I start with the TNX? Well, if you kind of compare this for a second, we'll even, uh, we're actually going to open up the TNX here for uh, three years, okay? For the last three years, this is the TNX. And again, so interest rates, interest rates over the last three years started to kind of appreciate to the upside, which is indicative of, all right, so interest rates are going up. And again, I'm using the 10 year as a little bit of kind of like a mainstay, but obviously interest rates have appreciated from really, if you uh, if you look back in time over here, and I wanna just clarify the time, here is actually in 2016, 17, and of course 18, the interest rates started of course to, uh, to climb back up. It's indicative, again, of kind of a recovery of the economy, things are getting much better, the Fed, the Fed no longer necessarily has our back, the Fed is actually raising interest rates, and all of a sudden, of course, a sharp reversal. Now, the point being of this and why I'm displaying this is as the interest rates are going up, okay, is that good for the S&P 500? Is that, you know, good for, for example, something like the financials? Now, if I take a look specifically at the financials on the chart here, you'll see that the financials, financials love higher interest rates because they can actually, what? They can actually yield more in the differential between, well, for example, you borrowing capital from them or capital that's sitting in your account, right? There's a better yield spread for them. What I mean by that is you deposit, you know, $250,000 into your bank account. You know, that money doesn't just sit there and do nothing. And especially when the interest rates are up, right? These banks can make more off of your capital, even doing nothing. Nevertheless, as interest rates started to go up, the financials, okay, applauded it. Now, there's been a degree, of course, of instability in here, but take a look at the financials recently, and they've been relatively flat. I think that the bothersome portion, okay, of this, and I'm going to show a, a true comparison here in a moment, the bother, uh, bothersome portion of this is 
Take a look at the financials that participated in this kind of wicked rally that we've seen effectively since, well, the beginning of 2019. But at the same time as the financials have been rallying, okay, interest rates since the beginning of this year, remember, have been going where, okay? We'll go back to the TNX for just a second. Interest rates have actually collapsed back down. Now, you have to look at this, and I know everybody's like, oh, something's got to give. Something's got to give. Well, let's actually do a comparison chart now. So we're going to take the TNX, right? And then I'm going to come over here and uh, drop down the studies, okay? I'm just going to add a study. It's probably off the edge of the screen. Compare with, and we're actually going to go into a custom symbol, and we're going to type in XLF. So there's the XLF, which again, happen to be the financials because I think the point is is much more I think you'll you'll get a better realization out of this by looking specifically at the financials and we can also kind of compare the TNX here in a moment to the spiders but I think the financials are really going to drive home this point so after I've actually got a comparison chart a comparison chart all it does is takes one product overlays it with another and puts it on uh, percentage terms now I come down to style it's effective to uh, to do this with like line charts. By the way, we can also throw, if you would like, we could also throw the uh, under studies, come down here, add another study, compare with, and I can also throw the spy in here simultaneously. All right. I don't want to make this look like, you know, this, this giant like spaghetti incident. Nevertheless, um, here, you're going to get a much better feel right now. So what, what we actually have on the screen, and I want to kind of denote where everything is. So the TNX, the TNX, all right, that's your interest rate component. It's right there. That's called your primary symbol. Next, we come down to the financials, the XLF. The XLF is right here, okay, represented there. And of course, the uh, the spiders down below. And what I wanted to show you, okay, is a wicked, wicked kind of divergence in here, all right? And the wicked divergence, and again, I'm gonna kind of compare and contrast for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm just gonna take off. I'm gonna remove the spiders for a second from this comparison. And we're also going to zoom into a tighter time frame. Let's just knock it down to the uh, to the last six months, or I apologize, nine months in this case. So we've knocked it down to the last nine months, and now you're starting to see it. <clears throat> we have completely diverged. Interest rates falling. The XLF okay remains above. So here in lies, and it very okay a very opportunistic trade, in such that. We can pair this up where you're effectively, you know, what, the XLF. Could we be short the XLF, okay? And kind of what, looking for rates to revert back up. Now, I don't want you guys to take this as, you know, I wanna short this and, 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 and get long this, all right? You have to look at this trade for what it is. What we'll be looking for is a convergence, okay, of these products, a convergence of these products. And what that effectively means is, it doesn't necessarily say, that the financials have to come down, okay? Interest rates have diverged extensively from the financials. And even though that the Fed is distorting this, okay? The Fed has been distorting this now for, for years. In fact, I'll change the time frame. You can even go back over the last 10 years. Let's actually knock this to a weekly, hit okay. And you're gonna see, again, just wicked, wicked divergence in here. Nevertheless, in the shortest, okay, in the shorter time frame, here we have one of the largest divergences that we've seen, again, in any recent history. It's because the Fed, again, is kind of back on the accelerator. However, as you'll find if you take some time and do some homework over here, these substantial divergences, okay, do not exist for extended periods of time. So in this case, again, I'm just showing you a couple of time frames in here. We're comparing, as I said, the interest rate itself, okay, with the financials. Now I want to remind you of something. You can't just go out and like, you know, buy or sell the 10 year treasury. What you're doing at that point is you're trading the bond product or you're trading, for example, the TLT. Okay. So how would you take advantage, if you would, of a trade like this? Okay, how could we take advantage of where, you know, we, we see this very large divergence in here. We know that we can effectively short this product, okay, and go long interest rates, meaning that interest rates are going to go, you know, and rebound back up. Again, this is not just about trying to be short the financials or long rates. It's about the convergence of the products. To trade this more effectively, 
we would have to likely use the TLT, okay? So I'm actually gonna snap back and just look at the TLT. <clears throat> this trade would then break down to short the bonds, okay? And kind of short financials and look for them to converge upon one another. Now, with that, on this weekend's video, to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna leave it at that, and I'm gonna discuss this, okay, more throughout the course of the week on Theo Trade while I'm live. In fact, I'll even do a coaching session specifically on this kind of trade idea to set it up. I mean, we gotta know how many shares of the TLT versus the XLF, or do we even have to use the TLT? Could we just go out and outright, you know, use bond futures? Absolutely. And I'll show a variety, again, a variety of different ways to go after kind of this divergence. Now, again, the divergence, it's large, it's real, and that's what we have to consider, okay, in the next couple of weeks of trade. When you look at this, you know, I, again, I think everybody screams out, something's got to give. I mean, we had pretty much all asset classes up throughout the course of the week. Now, when I talk about asset classes, take a look at the spiders. They're up throughout the course of the week, right? We'll talk about expected move here in a moment. If you actually look at the bonds throughout the course of the week, I mean, net, net, the bonds, minimal gain. I mean, listen, this started here as one, two, three, four, five trading days. The bonds pretty much up throughout the course of the week. Gold, gold had like a stellar, absolutely like breakout week to the upside. And it just goes on and on and on. I mean, <clears throat> listen, all asset classes, effectively all asset classes were up on the week. And it speaks, again, it speaks volumes about the markets. But as, as people say, you know, mm, something, something's got to give. So we saw gold. Here we've actually got, again, the financials. The financials, ah, this one is actually minimal. Okay, it's very, very minimal. Come back to that in just a moment. So as people are like, yeah, something's got to give. Well, no, right now, okay, we have to actually play kind of wait and see. Why? Because again, this past week of trade, as we said, as we came into this, you know, it did not disappoint. I mean, it was kind of a wicked week, which will actually take us momentarily here into the SPX and looking at the expected moves, right? This week did not, uh, again, disappoint. We had a, a $63 move, actual move in the SPX and the week coming, okay? It too is actually priming to be substantial. So this right now, the entire marketplace, you know, oh, all asset classes are up. And listen, we are in a, an extraordinarily binary marketplace. And I know a lot of people that tune in, they don't like to hear that kind of stuff. That, what a binary marketplace is, you're gonna explode higher, or we're gonna completely fall apart. And there's, there's just no in between. You have to recognize, of course, you know, that the market's moving forward. And again, now we're gonna, we're gonna look forward to this next week. They're pricing more risk to the coming week than they did to the previous week. That speaks volumes, right? And you're like, what? Okay, because a lot of people didn't catch this. In fact, I'm gonna show you it specifically. So I'm actually gonna to go to the Analyze tab here on Thinkorswim. If you go to the Analyze tab, drop back to the 16th of June. June 16th, obviously today. We're at the 22nd, but let's drop back to the 16th. Why? Because on the 16th, it was denoting the markets were supposed to move $41.56, $41.56, okay? What was the actual move again? So here's the $41.56, and I wanna highlight that on your screen, kind of box it in. When I talk about that expected move, the market right here was expecting $41 higher or $41 lower. What did it get? And again, I've been talking about this at nauseum. We actually got, as I said, it was a $63, okay, and 40 eight cent actual. So what did I tell you last week? Don't dare sell options premium. Don't dare sell options premium. If you've been selling options premium the last couple of weeks, you got smoked, you got smoked, okay? You might've actually turned out all right this week, you got smoked. The option marketplace is doing a horrific job, again, of handicapping risk. But here's the crazy part. The crazy part is we had a $41 expected move this week with the Fed. Everybody was like on pins and needles over the Fed. Well, guess what? They're pricing even more risk, right, to this next week. Why are they pricing more risk and exactly how much risk are they pricing? Well, look no further than what? The June 28th. Why June 28th? It's next Friday. $45 expected move, okay? So it's not like a drastic increase, but they're giving, again, more risk towards 
this G20 meeting, which, I mean, the G20 meeting, what, what are we going to get out of it? Most likely we get a couple of handshakes, you know, maybe, maybe even a few hugs out there. No, I'm just kidding. There won't be any hugs. Um, a few handshakes. They'll tweet a couple times and they'll say, well, the trade, the trade talks will, uh, will resume. And that's, that's what my anticipation out of this will effectively be. We'll see if the markets love it or not, but there's a $45 move up higher or $45 move lower. And again, this is all predicated on the G20. There's also a huge amount of data coming out this week. Now, I also want to remind everybody that in the midst of all of this, okay, and then the rally back, and uh, let's actually cruise to the spiders for a second, a little bit of a clearer chart. In this, uh, in this wicked rally back, I mean, the month of May, horrific, all right? The month of June so far has been spectacular. I mean, everything that we gave up in May, we've actually gained back in June, and yet we still sit at this kind of crossroads, this, this binary event. And again, when people don't like when I say binary event, because that means just that here we are, we're going to explode higher. We're going to explode lower. There's no in between in these binary event kind of weeks. But when you start to look at this, all right, what's different right now, what's different right now is the marketplace is truly applauding. Okay. The anticipation of the fed cuts. Okay. They are, but at the same time, you have to remember the backdrop. The economy truly is weakening. Now, I mean, people are like, well, we, we've kind of seen this movie before. Really? Okay. I, and I, I really want you to think back now for like, we'll put 10 years of a weekly of the spiders up here. Okay. During the time of the economic recovery coming out of the financial crisis. Okay. More often than not, we had data that was continuing to, to strengthen to a degree. The point that I just want to make with this is at no point in this 10 year, okay, period here, other than maybe in 2011, we actually felt like we we're going to drop back into the financial crisis. Things were still relatively weak there. Don't worry, the Fed, the Fed saved us all, okay? But now there is, again, global growth is definitively slowing. There's no if, and, or, but about that now. I mean, you know, there's like the empire manufacturing numbers came out this week. They're, they were brutal. They were slowing. And the markets are, yes, rallying on bad data. Now, okay, if you had tried to take the opposing side of the Fed at any time since the financial crisis, okay, that has not been a, a great trade. It's been like, you know, the fool's trade is trying to take the other side of the Fed, okay? But we are at, again, this binary, this crossroads where we truly are getting negative data, right? Companies, if the market is really, if the economy is slowing down, companies are going to start to produce earnings that just aren't, right? What the marketplace anticipates for these kind of valuations. At what point, and I've talked about this in the past, but at what point is the tipping point where it doesn't necessarily matter what the Fed has done? Okay. And I asked that question, you know, uh, a few months ago, you know, I call it, are we turning into Japan? Are we turning into Japan where they can flood the markets with capital? I mean, Japanese markets literally are buying their own marketplace and it's still not sustainable. And again, you can take a look at this. If you want to take a look at, you know, the, uh, the Nikkei, here's the Nikkei knock back a couple of years. All right. It's a party over here. They're pumping capital in. All right. And again, they're even buying their own markets. That's no more, you know, quantitative easing. That's just outright buying your own markets and manipulation. And the marketplace is still slipping. And it's something I think that we really need to think about here in the United States. Now for right now, again, we just need to look at what's right on the forefront. What's on the forefront of this marketplace, another wild binary week with a $45 expected move, I ain't selling that, okay? I'm not selling that. As I said, last week, it did, it did not disappoint. This coming week, this coming week, you, you know, I think everybody's gonna kinda sit back and think about some of their worst fears in the marketplace, but let's, let's think about the, you know, the reality. We have now the administration that's going into this discussion with China, and they're going into it with the Fed at their back now. Okay. Whereas before where the Fed was kind of listen, you know, these, these trade wars, let's not worry about that. We're raising interest rates, made it difficult to actually fight trade war. Well, the administration this time around, they're going into this. Okay. 
with a drastically weaker dollar, which is very helpful for trade negotiations. They're going into this, okay, with interest rates. Remember, with interest rates sitting, okay, pretty much rock bottom. I mean, you got to go back years to see rates below this point, okay? They're going into this negotiation with the S&Ps effectively at all-time highs, all right? So what do they have, okay? They have the power to not necessarily negotiate. And that's not, by the way, that is not any way indicative, any way indicative to be a bearish kind of connotation for the marketplace. Nevertheless, okay, I think we're all going to go through some of our, like, you know, our worst fears in what's, uh, what's about to occur in the next uh, week of trade. Nevertheless, keep in mind, do not walk into this week with a chip on your shoulder, okay? It's not going to help you in any way, shape, or form. When I say a chip on the shoulder, don't necessarily have like, you know, we're going to go up or we're going to go down, right? One thing I'll be looking at extensively throughout the course of the week is the VVIX. I want to see, okay, the volatility of the volatility index itself. Is the marketplace going to get risk averse and heavily risk averse? And to do so, they would be buying options, okay, in mass quantity in the VIX itself. Or watch the VVIX for any spiking up, okay? Is the marketplace trying to kind of, you know, tip us off, tell us anything about risk? Again, we have all asset classes, generally speaking, we're up, all right, in accordance with one another. We ended the week a little bit softer over here, but net net, again, as I said, this is all about this divergence between interest rates and the marketplace, okay? Interest rates, they're low. Everybody loves low interest rates until you realize why they're low. And that's because we're coming into, okay, a drastically weaker world economy. With that, thanks everybody for joining us here on this weekend video. I will explain Okay, in much more substantial detail, this trade between rates, the financials, and the S&P throughout the course of the week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.